Uh, today we would continue with the human adjustment processes where we were talking about the maintenance needs. Uh, last time we had discussed four maintenance needs, no? curiosity, understanding, order and predictability. Uh, today we would uh, continue with the remaining maintenance needs. The next most important uh, maintenance need is adequacy, which basically you know is uh, uh, somewhere a greater source of uh, information for oneself in terms of uh, helping you uh, go for auto correction mode, also in terms of uh, you know uh, realizing what uh, would be sufficient for you uh, given you know a particular type of situation that you are experiencing and particular type of or a set of expectations uh, that people have from you. So, adequacy uh, that way you know uh, somewhere plays an extremely important role as to make you realize that fine what you have done is adequate enough okay, or you need to do more. Also in terms of uh, say uh, not only complying to the need of the external world, but even in terms of satisfying one's own need, you look at uh, what you are, uh, uh, what you have achieved. Uh, what were the expectations from you, what you had thought of your own self and then you try to uh, know finalize whether it is uh, whatever you have uh, experienced in life, whatever uh, know you have finally achieved in life. So, based on your past experiences what do you consider are your uh, achievements you know uh, sufficient enough or do you want to need to move ahead. Usually in life uh, know once you achieve a target and usually in most of the cases it would be uh, when you are about to achieve the target human beings have a tendency of sliding the bar little higher. Okay. Uh, you must have seen uh, know in the uh, track and field events for jumps especially you know, uh, high jump, uh, long jump, pole vault for example, you know, where once you have crossed a limit then you again make successive attempts uh, just for the sake of record. So, you slide the bar little higher and you again retry uh, to see whether uh, no, you have achieved that level or not. Now, there is a certain level that you have already achieved, you slide the bar and in case in the games it happens, no, in case you are not able to do that, okay, your earlier level will be considered uh, good enough for giving you medals. In a day to day life, many of us are like that. that uh, you set an intermediate target for yourself and while you are able to you know approach your target when you know that it is coming your way very soon it will be there, okay, you just slide it little higher. Okay. This basically is a situation where you put yourself under tremendous demand, okay. not only the demand that the environment puts on you, but at the same time you also you know uh, expect more from you, you think that probably you are able to achieve more and hence uh, no, you should be trying more and more towards that direction. With respect to adjustment this whole uh, no, dynamics plays interesting role because it gives you a reason why to get engaged with the worldly things. Okay. So, there is a certain degree of feedback that you take into account, there is certain degree of self appreciation that you take into account. There is certain degree of uh, deficit that you also find I was not able to achieve things this way or up to this level. Okay. And then all these engagements help you grow in the process, it also keeps you engaged in the process okay. and therefore, it plays a good role in terms of uh, maintaining your mental balance, in terms of helping you out leading a healthy mental life. Then comes uh, you know, the whole sense of competence, how competent you are. Okay. Now, again in the previous case also now we found that many of these constructs were interlinked, you know they were too close to each other. So, is the situation here when uh, know you realize that you are competent enough to do something and hence one, one level again would be that when you realize that you are competent enough to do something and second level where the your in, people in your environment the other stakeholders would consider you to be competent enough. Okay. The more and more uh, know is the sense of uh, competence, you know you are full of uh, know that self esteem, you consider that these are things that can certainly be achieved. Uh, 
especially in uh, certain cases, no, I am again trying to now uh, look at couple of situations where the examples could be no too uh, no, uh, apart in terms of their whole nature, but we are trying to look at it from uh, the competence uh, perspective and how these things finally affect the psychological adjustment. Uh, if you look at uh, the different uh, the life of different heroes, uh, the war veterans, uh, you would realize uh, know that uh, many of them did things which they were uh, not actually expected of, uh, things which uh, their own teammates did not think of. Okay. But then uh, and you never thought that uh, know, you are competent enough to do that. Okay. But somewhere at a given point in time suddenly there is a self realization that perhaps things can be done like this and I can certainly do that and finally you achieve that level. Okay. Uh, today you have a, a war veteran coming for a talk in the evening. Okay. If you read the description. Okay. You would find uh, you know, that type of a situation there, no? something that uh, the rest of the teammates did not think of. Okay. Now, you think of climbing that uh, you know, hill top from the most steepest side and then finally, even though you are shot uh, with uh, you know, certain bullets, you still uh, you know, keep on keep on doing what you had planned of. Okay. Now, certain sense of realization will come halfway when you are trying to achieve a target okay. and this makes you realize that fine, I am certainly competent enough to do this. Okay. Bullets are not going to stop me. Uh, even in 1971 war, there was a, a similar type of an episode. Uh, do we have somebody here from uh, Jharkhand? Okay. You are from which place? Hazari Bagh, very close to your place now in Ranchi you have uh, uh, a very great war veteran coming from uh, that region. No? Have you heard his name? Albert Ikka. Okay. Now, Albert Ikka was the man, okay, similar type of situation he had experienced during the 1971 war and all he uh, did was know that uh, there was uh, no uh, know, face to face uh, exchange of fires between the Indian armed forces and the uh, Pakistani armed forces okay. and then this team decided that there could be a possibility of following a longer way out okay, reaching the Pakistani post from the back and then hitting them because uh, you know, this team could realize that there was one central point from where all these fires were coming. Now, this man you know, went ahead with that plan in terms of executing it and while he was about to enter that post. Uh, and there was only one survival, uh, uh, one, there was only one survivor there in the Pakistani post also. So, the person sitting there with the machine gun could realize that somebody is entering from the back side. So, he you know turned his gun towards Albertica. Now, Albertica got multiple uh, shots, he was already exhausted of his bullets. So, he attached his kukri, you know that sharp edge weapon that you put in front of the gun. So, he attached it. Now, you can imagine that you are uh, no, completely wounded, you are being uh, no, shot with bullets, but then you attach Kukri, go and finally, he stabbed that person with his Kukri. Both of them died in the process, but then the Indian armed forces, the remaining forces, they got the chance to move ahead. What I am trying to say is that there could be situations that you would have never anticipated in your life. You never thought you are competent enough to do that. Okay. But then the situation provokes you, okay. so the situation makes you realize that you also have the competence of performing something. Okay. Uh, in terms of competence, if you drag, uh, if you drag uh, know history from mythology, uh, when uh, Hanuman was uh, know asked to go and uh, search for uh, Sita his team came to uh, know came close to the seashore and uh, people were lost they did not know what to do. And then there was somebody in his team Jamwan who made him realize that you have the competence of flying in the air. No? So, there could be situations like that also in our life where you are told by others that you are competent enough to do this. There could be situation like these two war veterans. Okay. 
uh, that uh, you yourself realize that I am capable of doing that and you execute the task. Okay. From a psychological viewpoint, the uh, completely diametrically opposite side of it, it would be a situation what is called as learnt helplessness. Okay. This is a very common term used in uh, uh, clinical side of uh, psychology, where you deliberately develop a behavior which is self defeating, okay. but that makes you realize that you are helpless. You cannot perform now, you cannot do anything given the type of situation you have been put in. Now, this is basically the extreme end where you start compromising with what you are actually capable of. Okay. So, we have seen you know again two extremes of it, one where certain things that you had never thought of in your life, situation comes, you encounter it, you try to face it head on and then you plan a strategy, you execute it you show that you are competent enough to handle the situation. Second case where you are not willing to look at your own capabilities and hence you are compromising with your competence. Okay. But by and large uh, the very feel that you know I am competent enough to do this or even many a times you know, realizing and accepting that I do not have the skill to perform this is perfectly okay. It helps you draw lines in your life uh, to say that fine these are the things that I will do and these are the things that I am uh, know, not capable of. Okay. Say for example, if you are uh, good at sports, okay, you play uh, badminton very well, you uh, play football very well, you are very good at cricket, you know that fine these are uh, my strength, but say if there is a music uh, competition for example. Okay, uh, and uh, people are searching for somebody who can play tabla from this hall of residence and you simply you know accept that fine I am not good at it. Such type of you know, realizations also make you draw lines that I am not competent for task X, but I am very much competent for task, task Y. Okay. So, discriminatability you know that index increases in terms of uh, what I can go ahead with and what are the things that I should I can appreciate, but fine I cannot get involved into uh, doing it. Now, uh, the more and more uh, you, know, you have this sense of adequacy, the sense of competence, higher would be you know the rate of uh, perception of security. Okay, you feel you are far more secure. Security uh, you know, uh, from a different point of view, uh, if you see research in uh, the area of mental health, uh, where the studies have been you know um, carried out in uh, disturbed areas, you know, uh, like uh, uh, where uh, some type of civil war is taking place, uh, constant social disturbances, okay, diff different type of uh, discrimination taking place within the society. If you look at uh, you know uh, the research, psychological research on mental health coming from those zones, you would realize that. Uh, human beings they pay a heavy price for being into situations which are not providing them a sense of security. Okay. Uh, even otherwise if you look at the brighter side of our social achievement uh, say literature, uh, music, dance forms, all types of creative outcomes, you would realize that those societies have really come forward with uh, stuffs like this, which was at peace at a given point in time. No? So, more and more peace and harmony uh, no, remains in the society, you find more and more people are engaged in these things compared to when the whole society is put at war or the whole society is at unrest and during unrest you do not find you know, creative outcomes coming in. Okay. Uh, you have the full long engagement of uh, Vietnam uh, with the US forces and you could see what happened in those 10 years in Vietnam. Okay. Uh, the whole conflict, uh, the continuing uh, conflict between uh, South and the North Korea for example. Okay. And you could see how much price uh, one has to pay for it. Uh, right now in the Gulf you have uh, know few countries who have certain degree of instability. And you would realize that more and more unstable the social structure is. Okay, less and less is the creative outcome coming out of the culture. Okay. And when you carry out uh, know, research 
uh, pertaining to uh, certain type of behavioral aberrations or uh, pathological behavior would realize that the number suddenly increases. Okay. There are several, several, several research, research, research which proves that this is how things happen. Human beings have to pay a price for uh, know, being in such situations. So, a sense of security certainly plays <coughs> a very, very important role in terms of uh, helping us maintain our level of adjustment, helping us uh, maintain our level of uh, mental balance. Another interesting thing is uh, know, the sense of love and belongingness. Know. You remember last day also we had talked about uh, security and uh, sense of affiliation, when we were talking with respect to the Maslow's need hierarchy theory, know, that we have the biological needs first, then the need for security, need for affiliation, self esteem and then self actualization. So, there also we had the need for security and the need for uh, affiliation. Love and belongingness represents the same thing that you tend to love people and you also want that people should love you. Love uh, and belongingness basically uh, know, makes you also feel secured, know. you know that there are people who belong to you okay. and you also know that there are uh, uh, know, certain things if you fall in those type of situations, then there are people who would definitely come to your rescue. Okay. So, great degree of uh, know, uh, solace is there, okay. you can very easily uh, know, sense in your life that fine there are people in and around me and in at, uh, know, during the time of need, I will certainly have certain number of helping hands that will be extended to me. And this is a reciprocal process. You also know think that fine if uh, there is somebody in need, okay, who belongs to me, I would also take pride in extending my helping hand to him or her. Okay, so you do not feel uh, know that you are completely isolated. Love and belongingness plays that important role. Love and belongingness know also helps you learn several uh, social skills, which also have high degree of uh, know evolutionary uh, need it satisfies to. For example, uh, the basic feeling of love for human beings will always uh, know, help you uh, know, take care of people who are not capable of taking care of themselves. For example, uh, know, uh, rearing a child for example, know, when you have very small babies who cannot do anything on their own, okay, this, it is this very tendency that helps you take care of a human baby. Okay. Uh, later on when you become parents, you would realize know, that there is certain degree of price that you pay for doing that. Okay. It is not that you only love the baby or you only take uh, know, uh, pride and you derive pleasure in terms of interacting with the baby. You know. uh, know, the, the baby would urinate, the baby would defecate, baby would need all types of attention, things which are not pleasant, know, but you perform that act. <coughs> Okay. And the whole act is driven by this whole sense of love and belongingness that because I love you, because you belong to me and I belong to you, hence I provide this care to you. Okay. Extend it to the to somebody in the family who is at the terminal end of the life, okay. somebody who is extremely old now okay, and is on the deathbed. Again you know provide all type of care, you, pro, you are concerned about him or her. Okay you take care of that oldest family member of yours who is about to die. Okay. Again it is driven by the same sense of love and, be, love and belongingness okay, that you are my so and so and I am your so and so and hence I provide this care to you because now you have come to a point where your body system does not support you. Okay. Love and belongingness again you can extend it to the completely another sphere where you show not only love and belongingness uh, to uh, somebody or for somebody who belongs to your own uh, family, but it could be more and more of a generic type of a love. Okay. When you say that I love uh, the mother earth for example, when you say that I have a great passion for I love this cause for example. Okay. Uh, there are even in our own country, there are communities who had shown extreme degree of love and belongingness for certain cause for example. No? Um, Uttarakhand, the whole Chipko movement was you know, if you analyze it from this point of view, okay, 
it is for you know a great degree of love and belongingness <coughs> for those green trees and you say that fine we won't allow these trees to be cut okay I, we want to maintain certain degree of greenery around us okay and we uh, love these trees as much as uh, we love anybody else in our community okay there are very interesting dynamics here you know when you look at love and belongingness from uh, that extended view point the very fact that you are being loved you belong to people okay will certainly uh, know act as a deterrent in situations when you are about to sing because the moment you are sad you are depressed you would realize that there would be people who would start humming around you who will tell you that fine i don't know why uh, you seem to be in trouble okay you can share it with us okay and especially collectivist culture like ours also no is a collectivist culture where even strangers can at times no no show certain degree of love and belongingness to you okay so that's an interesting side of it in social psychology people read these things from a much detailed view point where there would be comparisons between individualistic and collectivist culture where you know the whole approach of human beings towards the fellow person in the society will know definitely get moderated because uh, you love uh, and uh, you belong to some people in the, your society you also seek approval from them okay uh, the whole uh, dynamics of uh, human development is somewhere guided by this whole sense of seeking a approval okay uh, again uh, look at a small baby growing in a family who is instructed to do something okay and the baby would seek approval of the elderly members of the family okay uh, i'm sure you must have seen small babies how they interact with uh, older members in the family uh, say a small baby who for the first time in his or her life is able to stand up holding some object so a baby who was just crawling suddenly holds a chair and with great effort is able to make his or her body erect stands uh, no uh, on his or her own foot okay and you approve of this behavior you say great you clap you admire that behavior somewhere the human child realizes oh this is a worth doing act okay the child will try to repeat it more and more more and more okay and usually uh, no this behavior such behavior would be repeated in front of others so that every time you approve of it okay similarly you know when you uh, know advance in your age a bit you go to uh, formal schools and then you are told that these are the doable behaviors no you tend to comply to it because you want to get your behavior approved okay uh remember your uh, earlier days in your schools when the teacher would come and uh all of you would be expected to stand and in a very you know in a very very rhyming form you say good morning ma'am you know, there is a pattern of it no and very religiously as a new child you just enter the room this is your first day you don't know what happens when a teacher comes and you see oh this is what happens no you didn't know what to do and therefore you kept sitting on your desk on your chair and then uh, the teacher looks at you oh you don't know what has to be done and next day you know uh, ensure that the moment the teacher enters you would suddenly stand up join this whole crowd in the class and sing the same way you know good morning okay. this is again no seeking approval in life goes to the extent when you come to class 9th and 10th uh, and your friends your parents uh, friends of your parents some of your teachers tell you that uh, how worthy it is for you to prepare for the joint entrance examination okay uh, many of you who would have otherwise uh, no not thought of je okay or would have thought of something else prepared for je because parents wanted so i'm sure in many of these cases uh, no this is the truth okay you thought of something else and even after coming here no many of you plan things different way okay but je was basically you know 
not your dream, but the dream of your parents or say uh, no, implanted dreams. Implanted dreams means you see Verma ji, you see Sharma ji, you say Singh sahab, no, their kids have done this. So, this is an implanted dream, therefore, you could not think what to do, therefore, you start looking at others and because you see other children doing this. So, this dream uh, no, you graft on your own self and you say my son should also this, my daughter should also do this. Poor son and daughter they do not have any choice, okay. uh, no, but to accept it fine. So, if not this then what and you say I do not know I am only in class 9th, I do not know what are the possibilities, ah, therefore, I am saying do this okay, and you gradually move in that direction. But approval from a very different viewpoint if you see, uh, no, it plays a very interesting role. I am taking a completely different stand now. Uh, think of a situation where you love somebody and hence you do not uh, know seek the approval of that individual. Can that be a possibility in life? Till now what we have been saying that approval is something that we always look for. We always look forward for it. We want uh, know that others should approve of my behavior and I would also take pride in approving behaviors of others. No? The whole social system has uh, know been developed like that. Uh, if I extend it from individual to a systemic level, uh, say there are organizations which are headed by a, a group of people who have the whole responsibility of approving something. Say for example, uh, no food and drug administration, no? it is supposed to approve certain types of uh, no drugs and foods whether it is good enough uh, for consumption by civilians or not. You have uh, say uh, DGCA, no? the Directorate General of uh, Civil Aviation, no? uh, they are supposed to regulate the whole uh, no movement in the Indian sky for example. No? There are all types of authorities which are simply supposed to approve one thing or the other. There are committees, okay, in your own hall of residence you have committees, no, which is supposed to approve something. Okay. So, we have you no know, systematically you no know, uh, very much appreciated this whole process of approval. Now, let us make a mix. I give you gave you an example that I am I might be good at uh, badminton, I might be good at football, I might be good at cricket, but I might not be good at singing, I might not be good at uh, say uh, other performing arts. Okay. So, I realize that uh, my competence has certain degree of restriction. I am mother of a baby okay, and I love my baby like any other mother. Fine. I am not competent enough to sing, I have a bad voice. But if you ask the mothers and they will say that they have been singing lorries for their kids, okay, all mothers do that and all babies love the lorries <coughs> sung by their mother, not by mothers of others. So, basically as a grown up individual, I do not seek approval from my baby, or they just test my voice, is the sound level okay? Uh, is my voice quality okay? Okay, is it melodious? Uh, does this song is this song okay or is that song okay? A mother never seeks approval from the baby. Out of that great degree of love and compassion, you sing for your baby, and your baby loves it. So this is an interesting dynamics again. You see, you know that at certain point you realize that you do not seek approval at all. And you do not even uh, know, look at uh, what you are competent of and you are not. Okay. Just the fact that uh, know, there is a requirement uh, that I should sing for the baby, which will make her pleased uh, before she sleeps, and therefore, I do not relook at my own uh, voice quality and my other uh, qualities which will prove me to be a great singer. I simply sing for the baby. That you, know, you can look at human adjustment from this point of view also. Know, that for certain segments you realize that I need not seek approval. Okay. Now, the fact that you are driven by certain degree of curiosity in your life, the very fact that you understand certain stuffs in life, your curiosity helps you understand based on the fact that you have understood certain things you are able to put things in order in your life. 
more and more orderly your life is, greater is the degree of predictability. You derive a sense of adequacy that I am uh, adequate enough uh, to do certain things, my achievements <coughs> are adequate enough to fulfill my dreams. You see uh, in yourself that you are competent enough to achieve certain targets. Okay. All these things makes you, you know, feel secured, uh, you, know, you are loved by others, you do have people whom you love in your life, people approve of your behavior, you also approve of them. Okay. All this thing happens in your life and then you derive value out of your, out of this human survival. Okay. You feel how valuable it is to lead life like this. You see meaning in what you are engaged in. Okay. Uh, in psychology, uh, there are you know, good amount of literature on uh, deriving meaning in life or deriving a sense of meaninglessness in life. This would be you know, completely opposite phenomena. Okay. We would always uh, know, like to have an engagement with things which has certain degree of meaning. Now, what I find meaningful need not be meaningful for you, that could also be a situation. Okay. And hence, uh, even though I might be engaged in it, you do not approve of such type of engagements, because you do not find it meaningful. Okay. But then, there would be certain things that as a, uh, know, at a larger level, the social uh, system uh, know, values them and therefore, people anticipate that you should certainly you know, have these things in you, you should certainly try to achieve these things, because these are value oriented things from the social viewpoint. There would be things that you value personally and hence you would certainly like to achieve them. Okay. But this whole engagement in this life uh, should have certain degree of meaning. At least uh, no, you should have uh, come to a point where you say that even though a segment of people do not find meaning in doing these things, they consider this to be worthless, I still find meaning in doing this. Uh, right now, we will come to it, when we would be talking about this whole uh, know, value oriented uh, know, systems and how they become extremely, extremely stringent in terms of evaluating you. And therefore, many, many a things, many a problems that later on we have in life, uh, they basically evolve out of the fact that you consider that your behavior does not fit into the value system that you have been uh, know, grown with. Okay. There is a certain degree of incompatibility between the two. During uh, second world war, a news appeared in the British newspaper that uh, there is a great degree of scarcity of milk for uh, children in Germany and therefore, many children are starving. The next day, there was a brief ad in the newspaper the British newspapers seeking donation, okay. that please donate, uh, we will uh, buy milk and uh, then export it for the German kids who are not getting uh, sufficient amount of milk. And this raised the eyebrows of many, many uh, Britishers, no? they said that how can uh, know you ask for donation okay, for serving children of the country with which we are fighting war. And the man who had given this advertisement came in front and said that fine, I have no enemy below 16. Remember that I am asking you for a donation to serve human babies, no, not to serve German babies. Okay. Whether uh, no, they live or they die, finally, no, they have they are actually the human babies. No. Let we have divided them into German babies, uh, no, British babies, and then we are engaged in war, but these babies they do not know what we are engaged in. They are having inadequate supply of uh, the milk for them and therefore, as human beings it is our uh, responsibility okay, to show charity to this extent that we uh, know collect stuff for them and then send it back to them, so that they get the chance to survive. In terms of value, in terms of meaning you find people who have contrasting viewpoints. Right now in Allahabad, uh, this uh, kumbh is going on and if you look at the whole set of uh, behavior that people are 
displaying there. Many people might not find it meaningful, many people find it extremely meaningful. Okay. Uh, there is a phenomena that uh, no, people follow there, they call it kalp was. Kalp was is basically for the full month, you go on the banks of river Ganges and you stay there. You can understand in this chilled weather, when the temperature had gone up to 3.5 and 4 degree, okay, there are set of people who would certainly be living in tents, but they go there, they live there for the full month, okay, because they find it extremely meaningful that their life has uh, no, been blessed, because they were able to complete this full month of Kalpavas during the Kumbh. Okay. Morning 4 o'clock and you realize that people will go and take a holy dip, right now for it is going on, it will continue for some more time. No? People who derive extreme degree of meaning, uh, okay, because in doing such things, because uh, no, they find it value oriented taking a dip in Sangam, great value attached to it. Okay. And therefore, the whole engagement that you show, it has highest degree of meaning. For many of us, it could not be have that value okay. and uh, this act might seem extremely meaningless. Okay. Uh, at many places, you know, most of these religious places, you would realize uh, you know, that uh, people perform certain act. For example, one such act is, uh, before the sun rises, you turn towards the east, okay, you raise your hand, worshipping sun, okay, you lie down on the ground, from your starting point, okay, you extend your hand, draw a line. So, that would be exactly your uh, you know, full length, body length plus the raised hand. No? So, you put a mark there, again you stand there, again you worship the sun, again you lie down on the ground and you do it till you reach the banks of the river. Okay. You can understand bare body, okay, chilled winter morning, okay, in this 3, 3.5 degree temperature, hundreds and hundreds of people doing it. No? You come to the river bank, you take a holy dip and you stay with folded hands till the sun rises. You worship the sun and you come out. You, you say that I have no done the highest service that I could have thought of in my life. You show it to somebody who does not value such type of practices, will say what type of nonsense is this. Okay. You are putting your life at stake, you are you know, engaged in meaningless act. Because you know, these two set of people have different type of value orientation and therefore, uh, somebody who finds a act extremely meaningful, somebody does not find it meaningful at all. Okay. So, these are again interesting dynamics uh, you know, of uh, human adjustment and remember one thing uh, that it is always good as human beings, when you look at others behavior, okay, try to understand behavior before you judge them in its own context. No? If you take any behavior out of context, it might look extremely meaningless. Okay. Say for example, if I am looking at the behavior of this individual who lies down on the ground, okay, draws a line, uh, covers a distance of few kilometers, reaches a river bank, takes a holy dip, stands you know, like that with wet body in the river, folded hands, waiting for the sun to rise. Okay. If I uh, take it out of the context and I say, what type of act is this? Even if you would not have followed this ritual, even if you would not have stood with folded hand, sun would have still you know, come in the east, okay, because this is a pure geographical phenomena. Okay, it has nothing to do with uh, your, you know, uh, your behavior of uh, worshipping the sun. But if you look at it from the social context point of view, then you realize, oh, the here is a culture. Okay, where sun is worshipped, where sun is worshipped in three forms and this is one of the forms of worshipping sun. Okay. And then there are, uh, no, this is uh, say uh, 10,000 years old ritual that people follow and you say, oh good, this is a living culture, okay, where tradition lives for thousands and thousands of years, you start appreciating such behavior. Okay. There and therefore, many a behavior which is otherwise classified as uh, 
meaningless behavior and hence uh, can be used as an indicator of uh, your mental health okay which uh, can be uh, no used to uh, as a denominator to say that no you fall short in terms of uh, that level of mental health that you should be having okay it is always important to look at all behavior from its social context point of view so do not you know take an individual or the behavior out of the context otherwise it is completely meaningless even say for example right now i am talking about it standing in front of you okay it is, if you look at my behavior in this context it makes a sense but imagine a situation when nobody is there in the room i come here okay open my laptop and then start talking to the chairs it has no meaning at all you will certainly question my mental health no it will certainly know that my mental balance has now gone in the adverse direction okay the moment these chairs are filled with uh, you people it derives a meaning okay all all human engagements have this thing no that therefore it is always suggested that do not take uh, no any behavior out of the context otherwise <coughs> you are committing a great mistake and then the most positive thing that one is always supposed to have in life that you always uh, know have a hope okay and this is again an interesting propeller it's a fuel that keeps on keeps on uh, know making you move ahead in your life okay even though you value certain things you have not been able to come to that level even though you find certain things to be meaningful you have not been able to do things that way but then you are still hopeful today i have not been able to do that tomorrow definitely i'll do it i have not been able to do this my children will certainly be able to do that okay Ma, uh, we all have failed but the next generation you know i will certainly be able to do that these no these are no certain uh, hopes that you know keeps bubbling within all of us and this helps us know whenever we are in a uh, negative mood state okay uh, we you know just remain in that state for a smaller period of time but then we again regain our energy and we again get engaged in meaningful acts okay because we are driven by you know this hope that one day this will certainly come and uh, you can have n number of n number of real life stories uh, know where you would realize that people did face the most adverse situation in their life but they were very optimistic and because they were optimistic therefore things succeeded for them uh, two true stories one story i think it has to do with some war which war i have forgotten but some war perhaps it has to do with uh, again i won't i won't make prediction it has to do with some war uh, that was the situation of uh, 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 pilot of belonging to the naval forces no so pilots with naval forces means they that they will take off and they will finally land on a dock of a ship okay so this man uh, you know took off from one of the air carriers that uh, their naval force had and mid air the, he was attacked uh, and uh, in that process he lost his eyesight so mid air okay you are flying a jet and you are blinded that was the situation that he experienced uh, he was constantly given command that you still uh, you are holding uh, that button so just press it from the top and your seat will eject out because uh, your uh, flight the tail of it has caught fire your life is in danger and he said that i am blinded i cannot see so uh, the commander said that nothing no simply press that eject button because you are still holding the throttle so press it your seat will come out and uh, no don't worry we will uh, no save you and this man said that i am still uh, no in hold of everything so keep giving me uh, no precise Uh, suggestion and i can still land the plane for few seconds this exchange took place when uh, the commander on the ship realized that this man is not going to eject 
So, it is better to give him precise instructions, so that he can land on the deck. So, they kept on giving him instructions and this blinded pilot could land on the deck of a ship, which was in the sea. Okay. Your hope can play such dramatic roles. Okay. Uh, another interesting type of a situation, no? uh, when uh, uh, I, th I think uh, no, if you read uh, the stories of people who are into uh, adventure sports, okay, many of them will tell you, you know, that uh, I would not have survived if I would have left my hope at that point in time. No? You are caught in a, a snow clad mountain and uh, you have no other life support system uh, uh, available to you. You lived in that situation for two days, when you saw a helicopter you know, searching for you. Okay. And how did you survive for those two odd days? And you say that there was still a hope you know, that someone will come. Interesting things uh, you realize, no? even in uh, um, comic representations, theatres, movies, you would realize no? uh, that one generation coming to an end with the hope that now the next generation will certainly do that. Okay. Come to one of the hard social realities of our country, I will end with that. In many uh, places in our country, you look at the houses okay. and you will be told that you know uh, this house was built by Mr. X okay. and uh, know, throughout his life he lived in a house like this, he could uh, know, not make a concrete house for himself and his family. After retirement he had some money and uh, whatever was left after know, marriage, education and things like this. He could make this, but then you know he could not complete the flooring. Okay, plaster also he could not get it done. Now, his son is into job, I hope one day this floor will be you know uh, will be done, now the cementing of uh, the walls will be done. And you realize, I am sure you must have seen people like that, who would tell you the stories know that this house was completed out of the full struggle of two generations, no? two generations, three generations and you would still find people who are still struggling to have a house of their own. For generations together, they have been on the pavement, they have been in small huts. Okay. But this interesting part of it is that you decide to migrate from one city to a strange city. Okay. Uh, most of our, uh, know, our development pattern has been such you know, that uh, the opportunity of growth, the opportunity of higher income uh, has been very squidly distributed. No? Economic student will know it much better. Okay, so, even if you try to work very hard in certain geographical locations, you do not have the opportunity to earn, whereas in some other geographical location with little effort you can earn more. And hence people have you know, developed this tendency of migrating to such places, where there are more opportunities, you can earn more. But then you realize that people are living in the slums for generations together, first generation, second generation, third generation and then you say, my grandfather came here long back. Okay, 60 years back okay. and uh, my father also was in this uh, slum. It is now that I have bought a plot for myself, I have bought a flat for myself okay. and you would hear several, several, several such stories. Couple of years back, I think 7, 8, 9 years back, I read in one of the newspaper, uh, one person who had qualified the civil services examination that year uh, was from the Dharavi area of Mumbai, the slum area of Mumbai. And he said that my family had migrated long back to Mumbai for a decent source of funding. We lived all together for generations in this uh, slum area, when finally, my family could make a small room for themselves. Okay. This very child, who was the youngest child of the family, I do not remember now how many uh, brothers, sisters he had, but he had few. So, out of uh, all those uh, know, siblings, he was the only one whom the family realized was uh, intelligent enough. And therefore, what they did was that the family had one room. So, they had put some barrier you know, in the air, okay, within the room, so that they create a double decker room type of a thing. Okay. This boy was always asked to go to the top, so that he can you know, 
completely be uh, involved in his studies. And while he used to study on the lower side of the room, everybody used to keep silent. No cooking, okay. uh, no television, nothing, the whole, whole family for hours all together will keep quiet and sit there, okay, as if they are mourning. This boy, when he finally qualified the civil services exams, he said that it is not me who has qualified the exam, it is my family who has qualified the exam. For years, can you believe that a whole family, a set of 7, 8 members keeps quiet for hours and hours, because one member of the family has to study. Okay. Now, but this is the hope, you remember, no? this is the collective hope of the whole family, that this boy will certainly you know, change the whole way of our life. And therefore, we all, he can study, therefore allow him to study, we can keep quiet, so let us keep quiet okay, and facilitate his studies. Our hope within that you know, love and belongingness angle, people whom you love, you belong to, you think you know that you can share certain hope and therefore, the whole behavior that is displayed within the family, within the society can get tamed. So, with this we have completed our discussion on maintenance needs. Uh, tomorrow when we meet, we will be talking about uh, some other process which is important for human adjustment.